glass is a highly underexplored material and design because the opportunity to explore what it can do is so limited. Historically, access to glass has been very difficult for artists. It's not something you can typically do at home. It's not something that designers typically have access to. You had to go to a factory. There was big furnaces. You have to work with glass blowers who are proficient at forming the material. A tenet of design is truth to material. And so how can you be true to a material? First, you have to understand it. You really have to work with it in a molten state to understand what it's capable of. You have to have a very, very deep understanding of the material to be able to successfully create, create with it. And really what Glass Lab does is it opens up the world of glass making and allows designers to really be playful with the material of glass and express their ideas without concern about technical issues or the typical budget constraints that are always in place when you're working in a more commercial venue. The Glass Lab program was conceived by Paul Haig, who's also a designer, for a summer design retreat in southwestern France called Domaine de Boisboucher. I had done that for a number of years uh, and was looking for a new uh, expression for a course and actually asked um, the museum through Steve Gibbs if he in fact could take equipment to uh, to France and support that activity. That became a challenge for us. How can we make this large glass blowing studio, highly portable. You, you have the unique task of, of raising the temperature of this material to 2300 degrees to make it molten. It's similar to working inside of a volcano, basically. This was new, low energy consumption, portable glass making equipment that we felt we could literally take anywhere. We can literally run glass lab with a few propane tanks like you'd use on your barbecue grill and the equivalent of what it would take to run a vacuum cleaner for electricity. So once that was realized, once it was realized the equipment could be miniaturized, then the problem became, okay, now we need to uh, develop an idea around how we transport it. Ultimately, wouldn't this be great if we could make this glass lab equipment and we could put it in a container and ship it around the world and take advantage of the efficiencies of international container shipping. So it's really a glass blowing studio to go. You can pick it up with a crane and pretty much put it anywhere and be blowing glass in 48 hours. And that was really the, the birth of Glass Lab. What was stunning about those first workshops in France with Paul Haig was the output. 10 days and 150 prototypes. I worked for 10 years at Stuben Glass. I didn't have 150 prototypes. Paul worked as a consultant for Stuben for 10 years. He didn't have 150 prototypes. In 10 days, we had 150 prototypes. It was stunning. Very quickly in glass, you can have a, an idea, realize it in 15, 20 minutes, evaluate that idea as a prototype, and see if you wish to you know, take it to another level. One of the things that really struck me the first when we first went to design Miami was an almost giddy sense of, oh boy, here we go. What we like is for the designer to get right up there, to be right with us, to feel the heat, to experience the malleability you know, through our hands, to really be there is the way that a designer can most benefit from it. What I see when I see artists and glassblowers working together is I see someone with an idea, a vision, and I see someone who's more like an engineer with the expertise to execute that idea. Each feeding off of the other's knowledge, each really benefiting from the other's mind. Working on Glass Lab has been the most satisfying glass work I've done in a very long time. You're pushed to do things that you're maybe not comfortable doing. That really results in some amazing work and some breakthrough moments for our glassmakers, I think. What the designers are asking us to do in glass requires incredibly skilled glass making. You've got to have the chops, you've got to be able to make this thing, uh, and you also have to be flexible to, to really roll with it as the designer says, oh, I don't want it round anymore, I want it square. You'll see them come with a very fixed idea of where they wish to go with a particular experiment and realize that they can change course. When they see the way this material moves, the way it drips, the way it glows, the way it expands, the way it contracts, they'll respond to it directly and sometimes end up with a very wonderful result that's nothing at all like they intended in the first place. 
It's a fantastic opportunity for the designer to explore the material, and it's an equally interesting opportunity for the public to get a glimpse into the design process. Part of the idea of Glass Lab is this public performance where the public can really see how does a designer have an idea and then realize it into a form. Any way of giving an insight into the creative process, I think, is, is valuable. The audience really lends a lot of energy to the process, and um, I think the glassmakers feel, uh, uh, feel proud to be able to do what they do in front of an audience. You know, it's not, uh, it's not something that you see every day, and it's not everyone who can, who can make glass on this, this level. Being in a public forum and showing people that we're, that we're really pushing the boundaries and we're, we're pushing glass into new fields. You know, we're not just working with glass designers. Uh, we're working with industrial designers and architects and fashion designers. Um, and uh, I think it's important that the public know that, that, that Corning is about the future of glass. So the whole idea of the program is not to make a perfect product. It's really just to experiment with the material and see where you can go with it. Part of the desire of Glass Lab is to push what glass can be and to have designers, artists, architects be less conservative about the use of glass, to push it. I think that's what uh, drives any particular art form forward. It's the experiment, the willingness to take risk, to, to go where you know, no one's gone before. In a way, it confirms uh, your abilities as a glassmaker because it, it pushes you in ways you don't push yourself. Um, you're pushed by designers to create things that you may have considered impossible until you've, you've tried it. And um, I think for a lot of our glassmakers that's been a very, very positive thing. So the designers right there seeing how the design evolves and through that process discovering what glass can do. And the minute the session's over it's when are we going to do this again?